So the other topic that I want to get onto today is about William Ragg, the Conservative MP. Um, well, sorry, former Conservative <laughs> MP, now independent, um, in Hazel Grove uh, in Greater Manchester. Uh, it came out last week that he had become embroiled in this sort of honey trap, sex scandal type situation. Um, essentially what happened was that he was chatting to some guy on Grindr, the gay dating app, um, and ended up sending some compromising images of himself to this person he was talking with. Um, and that person then used those images as leverage over him, ended up sort of demanding uh, contact details for various other MPs and uh, Westminster staffers and journalists and such. Um, and yeah, the, the response to this, I mean, the whole, the whole case has been completely bizarre. Um, obviously it's not a very clever thing to do if you are a public figure to send, you know, naked images of yourself <laughs> to random strangers. Um, but the response to this has also been pretty interesting. Um, you have a lot of people saying, you know, we should feel really sorry for him. Yeah. He's a victim in this case. Um, he's courageous. Or just Jeremy yeah. Hunt. Yeah. So you have Chancellor Jeremy Hunt saying that he's courageous, um, particularly for apologizing and coming is, forward Is it about courage it. to take a picture of your penis and send it to someone you don't know, <laughs> may not even exist. Like that's a kind of courage, but, you know. Well, <laughs> yeah. On quite. a serious note, uh, in any political organisation, mm. the number one rule is that you do not sell out your comrades. I mean, yeah. you know, I cannot believe that he was not immediately sacked. That there's, you know, if you if you are, you know, hanging Lee Anderson for saying something, you know, rude and yeah. off colour. If you're, you know. <laughs> The, if you look back at the sort of ways in which MPs have had the the whip removed for, you know, some th things that are slight in comparison mm -hmm. to this, compromising the security of your party and security of your political colleagues, I can't believe it. I cannot believe he was not immediately hung, drawn and quartered. Yeah. And I, I suppose why wasn't he? Is it because Rishi Sunak is just desperate to not have any scandal, potentially? Maybe it's a sort of self-preservation thing. Maybe it's because the Tories, I'm not saying that going on grinder, there's a problem with going on grinder, but the sort of level of public degradation that's going, whether it's like tractor porn or, or yeah. there is so much sex stuff going on within the Conservative Party at the moment that you just don't want to know about, or wish wasn't made public. Um, it's like, so always the Conservative Party. Get on with your job and stop doing these things. Um, and, and also the fact that lots of people that, a lot of people that he gave the numbers of then themselves. Yeah. Sent pictures. There's at least there's at least two MPs that they know of. I don't think they've been named as at the time that we're recording this. But but is it but so is it just sort of like a don't talk about it non scandal or is it the fact that to come back to the sort of victim narrative idea that he can get away with crying yeah. publicly and saying oh it's so terrible that I was you know I was yeah. under such pressure and you think you're a coward. It's also weird how like people volunteered that excuse almost on his behalf. You know mm. so it was this sort of sense in which he was keeping relatively tight lip, but you just had a lot of people kind of say, you know, he's got a lot of mental health problems and, you know, he's, he's a victim at the end of the day. But I think, uh, you know, there might be all kinds of reasons why Jeremy Hunt felt the need to say that. I don't know what was on Will Rag's phone that might have related or depicted him. It's a bit confusing. But um, there is this reflex, I think, which is the sort of the mental health get out, if that's mm. a horrible thing to say. And I think it's a big problem. Is that how do you hold politicians properly to account in an era in which that excuse is always there? You know, mm. you can do something horrendous, but you can claim that I was going through a really tough time while it happened. But it's obvious that this, first of all, this is stupid. I mean, there was that case, what was it, 10 years ago with that Tory MP, Brooks Newmark, who people might have forgotten about now, it was a ridiculous scandal, where a journalist, Alex Wickham, now of um, Bloomberg, then somewhere else, uh, posed as a 20-year-old Swedish blonde woman and tried to solicit sex pictures from Brooks Newmark, which he instantly took with his face in the picture <laughs> and some quite fetching pajamas. It was like front page news. He was, you know, he was immediately, you know, dispensed with how could you come back from that mm. but now it has because it can be kind of explained away to a certain extent i suppose i mean it, we should say that now at this point he stepped down from he was vice chair of the 1922 committees stepped down he also had a chairmanship on the select committees he stepped down from that he has given back the whip and so on because the the mood changed and people realized how ridiculous it was but the fact that even at the beginning of this scandal there was this ready-made excuse and that it kind of could work mm -hmm. is it tells you something about the age we live in definitely and it's, it's a bad thing isn't it i mean like i don't you don't have to go down this route that oh it could have been the russians mm. or it could have been you know 
Xi Jinping to realise that it's a bad thing if your MPs can be that easily blackmailed. Yeah, well... Which is not a good state of affairs. I mean, even the, we... Every week there's news about whether or not they're going to ban TikTok or whether they're going to do all these things because national security threats. Mm. And you've got politicians mouthing off to whoever will listen in the bar and, you know, some of them being potentially Chinese <laughs> spies. You've got other politicians sending blackmailable images of themselves to complete strangers. So you do think, I mean, I'm not that bothered, you know, interested generally by national security, but hang on a minute, I'm not going to be lectured to you about it if you're compromising it yourselves. Because, you know, on a serious note, if you are giving out information of MPs, it's a, it is a safety issue. You know, there's, there's, I think we should take it relatively seriously, despite the fact that it's from these sort of silly beginnings. But I think the in, the most interesting thing is to come back to the sort of question of, <laughs> of the sort of mental health victimhood aspect of it is that you know you're supposed to as a politician which is meant to be a public service i don't want to get all worthy about it but it's meant to mean something and so i suppose it says something about sort of careerist politicians these days but it's meant to there's meant to be some kind of honor in it and some kind of self-sacrifice which is that i think particularly in the conservative party at the moment which is obviously imploding that you just time and again see people working for themselves um, and, you know, whether it's go, Liz Truss getting a new memoir out to go on the after dinner circuit or William Rag selling out his colleagues, there is no sense of sort of a group of people who are committed to an ideology, whether it's Conservative or Labour, and are fighting for that and wanting to change the world. It's all always so petty, so personal. And I don't want to care about William Rag's mental health. I, I shouldn't care about it. It does have no relevance to me. It's not interesting. What is relevant to me is how good a politician he is and what his ideas are. And it feels like the news from Westminster all the time is about personal scandal or personal grievance mm. or who's been bullied, who got hit by a John Burkow's phone, who, you know, all this stuff that we don't care yeah. about because it, all they do is look up their own backsides rather than actually doing something. And that's a really depressing thought for upcoming general election, but yeah. it's true. There is a problem though, like Westminster loves talking about itself. Like yeah. <clears throat> when you talk about the politicians or the lobby journalists or whatever, they love a, you know, a scandal like this because it's something that um, is that proper kind of Westminster village gossip, which can perpetuate these things beyond that what is necessary. But it does make you think like the quality, I don't, you know, not to fetishize just professionalism, in politics, but how dim some of these yeah, people yeah. seem to be is quite alarming. Like the idea that you would just send these pictures, like, oh, I don't know this number, penis picture. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be <laughs> particularly encouraging. Um, and it's a bit like whenever they have a conversation about anything to do with social media or whatever, it's obviously filtered through their own experience. It's like the number of times that they want, they call for, you know, we need to censor the internet because they don't know how to work out their Twitter settings, <laughs> basically, because they don't know how to block people. They don't know how to keep the nasty stuff away from them. It just shows that um, these people who preside over such vast ways of life now just can't even tie their own shoelaces. Yeah. So it's not good.